Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to Overclockers UK. I'm going to take you on a behind the scenes tech tour and I'm going to show you all the goodies. I've been working at Overclockers for 15 years. I'm currently the head of technical. We've got this state of the art facility that we've designed and built from the ground up. We currently have over 30 employees that we have in our technical department and we build thousands of PCs every year. That can range from just a small office based PC all the way up to an eight pack water cooled PC or even a workstation or you know, a fully water cooled server. We really do it all. Shortly I'm going to hand you over to Ian and he can show you all of the stuff that we do in R&D and as he likes to say, let's get into it. Thanks, Chris. Obviously, they actually want some views on this video, so it's time to bring out the big guns and bring in 8-Pack. Now, obviously, 8-Pack is not just the king of overclocking, he's also the master of R&D. And in fact, he's the master of everything, as I've said before. Our R&D department here is split really into two sections. One to do with the hardware, and the other to do with the aesthetic and the design of the systems. So, let's first look at the hardware itself. What we do here within this room is test pre-production samples and indeed production samples to make sure they perform up to our standards. And what we're looking for always is performance, reliability and stability through all our products through the duration of their lifespan. We also, as well as checking our standard benchmarks, check uh, our performance against professional applications for our B2B customers that might need us to come up with a new unique solution for things like simulation, finite element analysis, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and any manner of topics or software applications that they may use. Here in the R&D department, on the left uh, of me here, we've got Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's testing the standard AMD mainstream platform here, and we often switch that platform to the Threadripper. Uh, at the moment, it's obviously being tested on the AIO cooler, but we've also got two 360 millimeter rads here to take care of anything up to 96 cores. On the right of me here, we've got the Rock, who is uh, currently testing an Intel platform. Now this platform is mainstream, but he again can quickly switch over to uh, the Sapphire Rapids platform on uh, W790, because we've got plenty of cooling here with the two 360 mil rads. A lot of this hardware is donated by the vendors, and we are supporting the vendors prior to launch to make sure when the product comes out, it's not only uh, working as the vendor wants, it's actually working as well as we want. And the vendor realizes obviously that we are pushing the hardware much harder than stock, gaining that extra performance. And they want to know that their products are durable under extreme uh, duress, if you like, by pushing voltages very high to check VRMs. Uh, and also that uh, we can do this because obviously we're designing our own cooling solutions. Now, an example of that, maybe this one here, it has a VRM cooling built in normally, but the fans get quite noisy. So just as a quick example, the customer wasn't happy, was happy with the solution completely in terms of stability, reliability and everything, but the small uh, 38 mil fans, I believe, uh, made too much noise for them. So we quickly designed something up for them so we can add 80 mil fans, which actually keeps the uh, VRMs 33% cooler than the stock fan, but makes almost no noise whatsoever. So as well as the hardware side of things, like I said, there's another part to R&D, and that is what we call the CAD designing, which is often, uh, to do with the aesthetic of a system or overcoming a problem. Now, obviously, the aesthetic of the system, uh, you can see a lot on the website in the 8-pack and infinite range, for example. This involves uh, designing distro plates, setting things out in CAD uh, so that the systems go together nicely, designing uh, specific tubing routes, designing cable routing, designing anything to do with the really high-end systems to give it a really clean look uh, and a distinctive aesthetic. Right, so that's all uh, been said, of course. Uh, and that's the bottom line, because 8-Pack said so. Now, back over to Chris. Thanks, Ian. So moving on from the CAD, once we've got the design finalised, we then have to cut the parts. So the next step of that is we need to set the cam up. So again, we do this in Fusion 360, um, and you can see on the screen here all the different colours, which basically denotes different tools doing different paths, essentially to cut out a blank piece of plastic into a finished part. 
So once we've done that, we send that over to the machine. We have various different tools that we can, you can see here for different operations. Um, and here's one I prepared earlier. We have a, a finished distro or half of the finished distro um, that's essentially ready for assembly. Next, we have our laser cutter. It's a 75 watt CO2 laser. This enables us to cut, you know, cards, wood, uh, and again, plastics. It's a little bit faster than the CNC machine, um, but we can't cut out troughs or anything like that. It only does flat. Moving on from that, we have a blast cabinet. So we basically use this to finish aluminium parts. So you might have seen the Dominate, for example, that we had loads of custom panels on that. So we blast them in here first before they get um, prepared for any, any further finishes. And then finally, we've got our Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon 3D printer. This is probably one of the better ones on the market at the moment. Changes very fast in the world of 3D printing, um, but it, it enables us to do um, like prototyping for new bracketry and things like that when we want to mount something in an unusual place in a case. Um, and the little benchy test that we've got on the top here, it did that in about 12 minutes, which is pretty good going. So one of the other things that we offer here at Overclockers is a full suite of customizations. So if you have got a chair, or you're ordering a PC from us, we can customize that for you. With that, we've got our UV printer. We've made some customized jigs so that we can um, put the chairs into the printer and print on the backs of them. And then we've also got an example here of some of the printing that we can offer on the outside of a chassis. Now we've covered these initial steps off, let's move on to the rest of the department and see how the build process works. So you've placed your order with us and it all gets processed through online. The order lands with us and we generate our paperwork. And once we've got your paperwork, we can go ahead and we can pick all the parts. So follow me. So once the warehouse has picked all the parts, one of our build operatives will then collect them and they'll take them to their build bench. Once it's then taken to the bench, <clears throat> they'll then make sure that all the parts are correct and they'll assemble the PC together and then they'll post test it at the end. So each build bench is its own dedicated space. It has dedicated lighting and also a post testing bay uh, for when the system's complete. They all have the individual tools and they're all assigned to a particular location and one thing that we also do is we have um, all the screws and things like that that we assemble the PC with rather than using the ones that come with the case or of having to root through to find which ones those are we actually have pots on the bench that have dedicated screws in and they're all also individually thread locked so that means that during transit and things like that things don't come undone and they stay tight once that's then completed we also have a dedicated tablet on the bench which allows us to track all the status of, of where that's going through the production process. Each builder is responsible for their own system. They do that from start to finish and we don't do anything on a production line. Each builder is also trained on how to use all their tools effectively and also the virtues of using cable ties. So this is our dedicated eight pack build area and um, this is where the eight team work. They work on all our really high end systems. So this is Infinite, eight pack and some of our render machines. You can see one of them here beside me. Um, this is one of the ones that we've actually customised for one of our high-end clients. They actually had a requirement that they didn't like how noisy the fans were that were mounted on the system motherboard by default. But the small 38mm uh, fans, I believe, uh, made too much noise for them. So we've actually made some custom brackets, mounted some nice Notchua fans on there. So once the systems are completed, they then get put onto our testing racks. As you can see, we have a plethora of different systems that are on test here, so we don't group them into batches or anything like that. Again, similar sort of thing. There's one in, one out. And then what we do is we essentially connect them to our server. That will then interrogate the system and ensure that all the parts are correct. I actually have an example here where it's flagged up that the, um, one of the parts inside the machine isn't as it should be, so then we can investigate that and find that out. Once it's gone through that, it will then test the machine you can see another one that's just beside me here as well that's actually on test at the moment. That will then test it through a plethora of different benchmarks and stress tests 
and we do that as a minimum for eight hours. So once the machines have finished testing, they then get put in this holding area. These are systems that are waiting to be quality controlled. One thing that we always make sure of is that the machines are left to cool down for a good couple of hours before we do any further checks. Once we're sure of that, we do checks in the BIOS, checks in Windows, verify all the test results. Again, we electronically check that all the parts are correct, just make sure nothing's gone faulty, everything's still detected, and then we package everything back up and we get that ready to go into our warehouse. So when the system comes through from tech, all the QC's been done, and it's been partially packaged up, ready for shipment. So it's in the original manufacturer's box, and what we do is we put all the accessories in our welcome box. So you'll have a power cable in here and a startup guide. And then what we do, we put it into the final carton, and then it's on its way to you. So if you've ordered a really high-end machine from us, you know, maybe you're really flush and you've ordered an eight-pack system, something like that, what we'll do is we'll send that on a dedicated shipment, so that'll be all strapped and secured to a pallet, and then of course, don't forget, the all important Haribo will be with your shipment. So once you've received your system, we provide a very comprehensive warranty package covering all the costs. So that's the shipping and the labor, not to mention any parts. So should the worst occur, you're in great hands. This is our repairs department. We've got a couple of machines that are on, on test behind me. And generally speaking, we want to give you a good peace of mind that, you know, should the worst happen, we're there to hold your hand. So here we are in our returns department. So if you've got any problem, these are going to be the guys that you're going to be speaking to. We're not robots, we're humans at the end of a phone line, and you can get in touch with us. All of the items that then come back to us are all processed in this area. So if it's a motherboard or a graphics card, anything like that, We'll unpack it, check it, test it. And you can see probably behind me some of the test rigs running through some tests on some graphics cards. So thanks very much for joining me on the tour. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. And don't forget, don't like and don't subscribe. And now I'm going to go back to work. <laughs>